to watch all of my exclusive content not featured here on my channel, log on to my website at I'm just here to make you think.com slash fumes. Throughout today's society of America, millions of people suspect that trustworthy measures are taken when relying on information discovered on the internet, and this common response is normally not acknowledged as any sort of issue or concern to the public. Nowadays it is considered to be more convenient when you are able to type or speak with a smart device to ask it a question, and its answer is usually credited as being persuasively correct. Like for example, not knowing about a particular entertainer's birth date can be easily retrieved by a quick and easy Google search. Or maybe you're seeking your local seven day forecast and Siri conveniently reads it out loud once you ask. But then you begin to search for detailed information and you need truthful answers to some serious questions you may have about a particular historical event that occurred during the late 1800s per se. Would you still rely on the quick and easy programmed answers that smart devices or search engines provide to you? Technology has evolved enough to where a person's inner abilities to think, read, and research for themselves are looked upon as some sort of nuisance. And that part should be left up to the most suggested theories that can be automatically generated from the internet by way of an algorithm system based on popularized information of the 1980s. Meaning, since it is more convenient to look up any information on popularized search engines, whatever information generated by these search engines is somehow credited as being truthful without any hesitation or room for questioning. What should make you wonder? Who gets to determine what information is generated, popularized and displayed on the initial page of any search engine results? And since technology is man-made and humans do commonly make mistakes, are things that we were once taught to believe in error-proof? Like for example, many of you were led to believe that all species of humans derived from the likes of monkeys, based on the science of human evolution and natural selection. When the creator of this theory, Charles Darwin, carried a heavy flux of racially motivated intentions and beliefs. Since 1859, that's when Charles Darwin uh, introduced Origin of Species by natural selection and the favored human races. Did you know that today they only report half the title that Charles Darwin wrote? His title had to do with favored human races assigning supremacy to the Aryan race, all others being inferior. inferior. How many knew that? Only a handful. His book was racist, and that was the basic purpose for writing it. For writing it. For writing it. For writing it. Now, with that being said, should you take any works by Charles Darwin himself as being the truth? This is very essential to be cognizant of when you're conducting your very own research on a topic. 
This is also why I mentioned on numerous occasions that research is not just merely taking someone else's word for it. In fact, the word research is defined as a verb that means to search or examine with continued care to seek diligently for the truth. What's very important to note here is that diligently is another way of saying carefully. And when you carefully research for the truth, it's as if you were carefully placing down something heavy. Dangers could arise if you don't take your time. So when you type something in a search engine on the internet and information is provided to you within seconds, would that be diligent enough to be considered the truth? Let's take things a step further. The most common human errors made when researching is their decision making, especially when clouded by belief perseverance. And here's what I mean by that. This psychological hiccup is known as confirmation bias in psychology, which is when a person is more likely to believe any information only if it confirms their pre-existing beliefs and they reject all other information that goes against their beliefs. In the book entitled The Web of Belief, which was published in the year of 1978, on the topic of confirmation bias, authors Willard Quine and J.S. Ulian stated, quote, The desire to be right and the desire to have been right are two desires, and the sooner we separate them, the better off we are. The desire to be right is the thirst for truth on all accounts, both practical and theoretical, and there is nothing but good to be said for it. The desire to have been right, on the other hand, is the pride that goeth before a fall. It stands in the way of our seeing we were wrong, and thus blocks the progress of our knowledge." End quote. So in other words, decision making is based on an intellectual judgment of an individual's perception which can be vulnerable when invalidated beliefs play a key factor in how a person conducts research for the truth and even more importantly how a person narrates their lives some people can't mentally handle the truth merely because it overwhelmingly contradicts their self-concepts narratives beliefs stereotypes religious faiths and even what they would consider being a fact. Nowadays, people would deem any sort of idea that they agree with as being a fact due to its familiarity or how the information that is given sounds about right from maybe an educator or some author of a book which exposes the alarming reality of how easy misinformation can travel right up under our noses. A lot of misinformation can be spotted by diligent investigative researching. But before this research begins, you must first ask yourself the right questions based on critical thinking and what makes logical sense to you. Start with questions like, how does Dane Calloway know what he knows? And instead of prejudging me based on skin complexion or how I may pronounce the words I speak, take notes from my presentations of information, regardless if you believe it or not, and then begin to search for unbiased primary and secondary sources of the information that I present, regardless if it contradicts your beliefs or not. Now, this may seem time consuming, and usually it is, but that's all a part of investigative researching. You just don't take anybody's word for it. You ask yourself, where did that information arise from? And then you go and find out on your own. Comedian, author, activist, and researcher Dick Gregory once stated that truth does not have to be validated by ignorance. 
which means that just because you don't know what I know and you continue to force yourself to believe in what you know without challenging it and properly researching it, and it may be the opposite of what I know, doesn't automatically mean that what I know is invalid and has no evidence to stand on. Throughout my years of investigative research, I noticed a common pattern of misinformation that is currently being credited as facts of American history by many of its writers, teachers, readers, and financial supporters. Misinformation lacks unmolested primary sources. And according to the University of Southern California, primary sources are documents, images, or artifacts that provide first-hand testimony or direct evidence concerning a historical topic under research investigation." End quote. Now, that is very important to note because trusting search engine results that are filtered by tags from various websites does not equate to a primary source nor a secondary source of reliable information when researching a historical topic, simply because there's nothing historical about a website. Then it goes on to state that Primary sources provide an unfiltered view of the past and in doing so offer personal, unique, and more complex insight into the period being studied. Instead of viewing history as a list of dates and facts, primary sources provide the original artifacts of historical interpretation." End quote. Examples of primary sources are diaries, photographs, illustrations, maps, newspaper articles from the time period, manuscripts, pamphlets, posters, autobiographical materials, interview or speech transcripts, oral histories, audio recordings, video recordings, films, congressional records, and government documents like census records, acts, laws, treaties, and bills. Now, it is not impossible to find the truth by using the internet. However, researching is a lot more time consuming than just a quick Google search or accepting the narratives of Wikipedia articles that were written by strangers. The solution to pinpointing what is truthful information and what is misinformation can be accomplished by you knowing anything that is easily accessible is questionable. OCO, my brothers and sisters, relatives, spiritual warriors, and free thinkers, I want to begin this segment with a question. What does your favorite actor or actress in the news media, along with American history, all have in common? Throughout this segment, I will be answering this question. And for starters, the news media consists of journalists who would then perform an act by reading from a written script live on camera. With this in mind, we can determine that this task is closely related to the duties of an actor or actress of a movie per se, all the way down to the individual being addressed by their stage name, disguised as their real name. This is why you will find popular news reporters making special guest appearances in various films, usually playing the role of a news anchor or maybe a meteorologist. This is also why various news channels would sequentially allow for their anchors to report, or rather repeat, the exact same information about the exact same topics verbatim. And Fox San Antonio's Jessica Headley. And I'm Ryan Wolf. Our, our greatest, greatest responsibility, responsibility is, is to serve, serve our, our Treasure Valley communities, the El Paso Las Cruces communities, Eastern Iowa communities, Mid Michigan communities. We are extremely proud of the quality, balanced journalism that CBS4 News produces. But we are concerned about trouble, trying to be responsible, one sided news stories, playing our country. 
plaguing our country. The sharing of biased and false news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, some media outlets publish these same fake stories without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false, false news, news has, has become, become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. 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 So what does this have in common with American history? In today's society, much of the information that has been presented throughout compulsory educational institutions have been written, reviewed, and then approved solely by the government to be deemed as facts uncritically, meaning no matter if the information presented is right or wrong. And it gets a lot deeper because that means that someone not only controls what you know about history in general, but it also means that information about, let's say, the history of the United States, for example, will differ when it comes to what is known about the U.S. and other countries throughout different parts of the world. In fact, during the year of 1948, at a time where the idea of the out of Africa theory was currently in development for deployment in compulsory education, the United States Information and Educational Exchange Act was passed and made law by Congress on January 27, 1948. Under Title I, Section 2, it covers the objectives of this act, or H.R. 3342, by stating that, quote, the Congress hereby declares that the objectives of this act are to enable the government of the United States to promote a better understanding of the United States and other countries, and to increase mutual understanding between the people of the United States and the people of other countries. Among the means to be used in achieving these objectives are 1. An information service to disseminate abroad information about the United States, its people, and policies promulgated by the Congress, the President, the Secretary of State, and other responsible officials of government having to do with matters affecting foreign affairs. What's very interesting to point out is that the word disseminate was used here, which means to spread or give out something, especially news, information, ideas, etc., to a lot of people, or to propagate. And then it goes on with number two, stating that an educational exchange service to cooperate with other nations in A, the interchange of persons, knowledge, and skills, B, the rendering of technical and other services, C, the interchange of developments in the field of education, the arts, and science, end quote. And then under Title II, Section 201, it details what this act means by the interchange of persons, knowledge, and skills by stating, quote, the secretary is authorized to provide for interchanges on a reciprocal basis between the United States and other countries of students, trainees, teachers, guest instructors, professors, and leaders in the field of specialized knowledge or skill, and shall wherever possible provide these interchanges by using the services of existing reputable agencies which are successfully engaged in such activity. 
The secretary may provide for orientation courses and other appropriated services for such persons from other countries upon their arrival in the United States and for such persons going to other countries from the United States. When any country fails or refuses to cooperate in such program on a basis of reciprocity, the secretary shall terminate or limit such program with respect to such country to the extent he deems to be advisable in the interests of the United States." End quote. The term reciprocity is the practice of exchanging things with others for mutual benefit especially privileges granted by one country or organization to another. So in other words, this act details exactly who controls all generalized information domestically and internationally, and it also verifies that the information given to us throughout American school curriculums have been manipulated to the point where people can only subscribe to the information that we were taught by instructors or teachers that the U.S. government has hired in order to propagate this specified information to the public without any room for questioning its accuracy or validity. Because under Title V, Section 501, it covers the general authorization of disseminating information about the United States abroad by stating that, quote, The Secretary is authorized when he finds it appropriate to provide for the preparation and dissemination abroad of information about the United States, its people, and its policies through press, publications, radio, motion pictures, and other information media and through information centers and instructors abroad. Now, what's very important to note here is that this very act has been updated exactly 64 years later on May 10th, 2012. It is now known as the smith munt Modernization Act of 2012, or H.R. 5736. And this very section 501 now reads, The Secretary and the Broadcasting Board of Governors are authorized to use funds appropriated or otherwise made available for public diplomacy information programs to provide for the preparation, dissemination, and use of information intended for foreign audiences abroad about the United States, its people, and its policies through press, publications, radio, motion pictures, the internet, and other information media, including social media and through information centers, instructors, and other direct or indirect means of communication. So, this is an act of scattering and propagating misleading information like a seed for growth and permanence. They have now covered all bases of what information is systematically propagated to the public about America, domestically and internationally, but this time around, including the internet, along with social media and all other means of communication. This is why you will find that other countries throughout different continents around the world would have totally different information on topics along the lines of American culture legacies, spiritualities, and even American history. I'm just here to make you think.